To begin with, the my fundamental observation is in uh, medical professional circles or healthcare professionals, informed consent is one area much discussed but least understood. That is the problem. That is where we need to clarify where exactly the concern and how do we respond to that concern. Okay? For that, there is a need for clarifying what exactly is the basic premise. Is there is a very unqualified absolute rule with regard to informed consent in a given context. Let me first clarify that whenever we talk about informed consent, it has its own contextual recognition and process also. In a doctor patient relationship of clinical matter, or where rendered a treatment is to be rendered, informed consent has a particular connotation. When the person is a subject or a volunteer for a clinical trial, it assumes at another connotation. You, I request you to kindly take note. Similarly, a person or a patient whose information you would want to incorporate in your research, that gives at another connotation. Therefore, the basic principle is one and the same, but the way you adapt to a given situation, the kind of relationship, you need to be very careful. Okay? What is the basic premise of informed consent? If you look into the ideological the debate as to how an individual should conduct himself or herself, the most predominant thinking which had tremendous influence in the western part of the world and also the other parts of late, of late means not 20 years or 30 years, maybe uh, of the last 50 to 80 years or more than that. That is liberalism, the libertarian thinking. The libertarian thinking very clearly propounded by various political scientists, very explicitly warrants that every individual, I am talking in the context of healthcare, please remember, every individual has a right to bodily integrity. It is my body, I know what I do with the, my body. Okay? If any person who would want to do anything with or for my body, I need to consent to that. Right to bodily integrity is one of the most important rights recognized for an individual. This comes under the libertarian thinking. For instance, Article 21 of the Constitution of India I mentioned. Article 21 is nothing but personal liberty as a fundamental human right. Okay? The same philosophy extends to the relationship like a doctor-patient either for the purpose of treatment or for the purpose of research or for the purpose of clinical trial. Whenever we say right to bodily integrity, please remember, it must be contrasted with some other situation. For instance, say a doctor proposes to treat a patient. 
because the physiological condition warrants some kind of either intervention or treatment whatever you call. The doctor says whatever I am doing it is in your own interest. It is for your own benefit. Therefore, forget about your liberty. I must be given a free hand to treat you because I am not doing it for myself. Please remember. Whatever I am doing, it is in your own interest. That is the reason why the well-structured proposition is the intention and the motive on the part of a service provider is always whatever he or she does is in the best interest of the patient. Fundamental. If there is any kind of problem with regard to that, the nature of the service rendered is questioned. Legitimacy of service provided is questioned. That is the reason why it is always understood that whatever the doctor does, please remember, it is always in the best interest of the patient. Therefore, the slogan or the proposition that the doctor does it in the best interest of the patient and the libertarian thinking saying that no, the patient has a right to bodily integrity, these two competing and conflicting viewpoints have, are to be understood whenever we talk about informed consent. For instance, wearing a helmet is compulsory in Karnataka. Seat belt is compulsory wherever you. It is my head. Why are you worried? Am I talking about your head? No. My head, my body, it will like a papaya fruit will break into two. Why are you concerned? I will die. So, who are you? You are the state. Okay? I am asking as an individual, who are you to tell me what should I do in my own interest? My liberty, I can do anything. Suppose if I cause a harm to somebody, I can understand you can regulate my conduct. Suppose rash driving, I don't think I will be able to justify. No, it's my vehicle, it's my body, public road. I want to drive rashly, whatever happens, come what may. You can't do that. Because in the process, you are harming somebody else. You are harming other person or other interest. Therefore, under no circumstances you will be able to justify. But when it comes to breaking my own head, why are you bothered? You are the state. Why you want to interfere in my own personal affairs? Extending a bit to logic further. Did you ban smoking? No, you didn't ban. I am smoking. I know that it would affect my health. Did you prohibit drinking? No, I drink, I know that it is. When you are not doing so, so many things, tell me what is the legitimacy for you to tell that I have to wear a helmet when riding a two-wheeler. The competing and conflicting viewpoints, please remember. The state comes into picture, please understand, that is what we call the most important ideological reasoning. State is in its own abstract form. Whatever the structure you give that emanates and originates from the constitution of India, the basic document. Okay? State acts in the interest of the people. People's welfare is the welfare of the state. Therefore, they go to the extent of saying what they generally think or society generally thinks that it is in the interest of the individual the state can interfere and impose by saying, no, if not for you, for others, your family members, etc., 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 we are going to impose and accordingly it is a law, you must wear helmet. These are the two competing viewpoints. One is the very interesting libertarian argument. The other one is the way the kind of state interferes state intrudes into and says, no, no, that is what is the best for you. I am telling you, please do that. If you don't do it, the consequences are there. Either you can be fined, you can be imprisoned, etc., etc. In the context of these many competing viewpoints, please remember there are no absolute answers. Depending upon the context, depending upon. Attempt to commit suicide is made an offense. Okay, If you think that wearing a helmet is justifiable in this particular reason, the same logic is applicable for attempt to commit suicide as well. 
that is what Supreme Court identified right to die should not be allowed because it defaces all other fundamental rights. Therefore, the Supreme Court felt it should not be done that way. In other words, a, a reasoning which allows the state or authorities to some extent encroach upon your, your own personal libertarian interface. In other words, you have choice, but the choice can be restricted. That is what we are doing in helmet rule, in seat belt rule, attempt to commit suicide or put it in narcotic drugs for example, drug consumption. It is prohibited, it is an offence, you cannot do that. But to what extent it should be extended? I mean, I think that is the debate. Why are we not banning tobacco smoking? We know that it is such a uh, problematic uh, uh, thing for in terms of the health, not only the individual, but the rest of the society. It is very difficult to. Similarly, prohibition. Why only one or two states in India? Why not the entire country? I mean, you have your own economic reasons, you have your own political reasons. Or at the same time, you cannot encroach into the personal liberty of an individual to such an extent where law would be held meaningless. It may not be possible to really enforce or implement such kind of thing. At the end of the day, you need to leave it to the individual consigns. In that way, the informed consent is to be appreciated in the broader parameters of this debate. It is incumbent on the part of the doctor who thinks that a particular intervention is to be made or a particular line of treatment is to be conducted. The doctor has to take consent from the individual. We agree that as a professional service provider, the doctor has the autonomy. Please remember. In terms of his qualification, training, education, etc., he or she is in a better position to tell the patient what is to be done in your own interest. But even then, the issue of right to bodily integrity, which is considered to be a very important facet of libertarian argument, they have said that, no, no, it is necessary, you have to take the consent from the individual. To what extent? I mean, that is where you try to understand the line. For example, a particular injection is to be given, are you expected to take informed consent? Or a major surgical intervention is to be done, are you expected to? Or examination of the body, is there need for informed consent? Or observing a particular test or conducting a diagnostic examination, whether you require, I mean these are the various issues that requires to be taken note of. And similarly, when we operationalize, for instance, whether informed consent is it required for an OPD patient? If so, in what way we do it? Our own cultural context, many doctors have serious concerns. OPD records are always with the patient. There is no record left with the doctor. How do we do? What do we do? I mean, these are the various issues which need to be looked into. Similarly, in the case of an emergency situation, nobody is around. Whether doctor is expected to wait for somebody or the doctor is expected to see whether the patient is in a position to in the process, the life-threatening situation may assume serious consequence. What do we do? Whether informed consent is it absolute in character? The patient could be illiterate. The patient may not understand the language which you are speaking. Or the patient may be a child. Or the patient may be intoxicated. There are so many circumstances where we have to find legitimate responses to those situations starting from this reasoning. That is the reason why I told you, there is nothing like an absolute principle as such. However, that does not mean right to bodily integrity can be compromised. Please remember. In fact, we have reached a stage where, as of now, in lot of consumer court cases, every complaint points a, a principle saying that, no, no, in this case, the doctor in, did not inform us the risks and implications involved in the surgery. As a result, we were in, kept in dark. Informed consent has not been taken, which means it is a deficiency of service on the part of the doctor. These are the various issues that are being raised. Okay? In terms of a legal aspect, please remember, there are a couple of legislations where informed consent has been legislatively recognized. For instance, Transplantation of Human Organs Act. There is a specific provision which says the consent on the part of the donor and on the part of the donee must be procured in a particular format what is given in the schedule. 
very clearly. Similarly, Mental Health Act 1987, whenever a person is to be admitted, whose consent is necessary? Under certain circumstances, you require a clearance from the judicial officer. Under certain other circumstances, the person who is admitting the patient, there is a need for. Similarly, PNDT, Prenatal Diagnostic Techniques Regulation Act 1994, MTP Act, Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act. In all these legislations, please remember, a specific statutory provision is incorporated to say in what kind of context the doctor is under an obligation to procure informed consent. And when we see informed consent, what kind of information, what kind of content, etc., etc., and what is that communication that is to take place. In addition to that, please remember, informed consent is also recognized in common law. Common law means the law which is not codified in nature. That is the difference between a statutory law and a common law. Common law means it is unwritten law. However, the traditions, the customs, the practices of the people generally are recognized, are reiterated by the judges in their judgments. And accordingly, the judgment becomes the source of law. In other words, informed consent both statutorily and common law wise also is recognized as a legal principle when it comes to the doctor-patient relationship where the treatment is to be rendered. Now, when we talk in terms of informed consent in this context, please remember as I told you, whether with regard to the research or clinical trial, ICMR guidelines, particularly uh, clinical trial, ICMR guidelines very clearly and schedule Y under drugs and costing 1940 also very clearly indicate what actually is the informed consent when it comes to a trial. In fact, let me put it very clearly. In the case of clinical setup or a doctor-patient relationship, what ought to be the content of the communication is largely left to the doctors generally. Largely. That is the reason why the same informed consent form is printed and the patients they sign etc. Just as a matter of routine. Go, just goes like that. But when it comes to, I am sure as member secretaries and members of the IEs you must have taken note of. In the context of a clinical trial, informed consent is very, very significant. In fact, the content various details that are required to be indicated each specifically without to, and i am sure you are aware the guidelines also mandate the informed consent form must be published in different languages it is not only in english or hindi because the person from that area may join as a uh, volunteer therefore you have to vet it i mean that's where ethics committee plays a very very vital role please remember in fact that is the reason why in fact uh, I want to specifically mention, in fact, these are the reasons why the presence of a lawyer is mandated in an IEC. Please understand. In fact, many people, they used to think clinical trial is more of a scientific, technological, full stop. We said, no, ICMR guidelines indicate because all these agreements are required to be vetted. In fact, uh, yesterday I was in an ethics committee meeting for about three hours. I made myself very clear why I am required to be in an ethics committee. This is what I am expected to do. And I request all the members to realize and the presenters of different protocols must understand and appreciate my responsibility. I am here representing the patient interest, full stop, nobody else. And I must make it very clear, if I have a doubt with regard to the what kind of content that is provided, I must point out and tell you, you must seek a clarification or amendment from the sponsor. You cannot raise your argument by saying that, no, no, Jogaro, all other centers, they have already started the trial, we are already late, just give some kind of approval or subject to that, we will start. He said, no, questions do not arise. And very particular, you will be surprised each word what is used is examined. In fact, yesterday, I just want to tell you because this is the context I thought it's very relevant. I'm sure all um, those who are in ethics committee, you must have looked into patient information sheet and ICF. One particular clause is generally mentioned. That's called property rights. You know what do you mean by property rights? Suppose the outcome of the clinical trial results in generation of an intellectual property. Okay, like a patent, etc. The patient or the volunteer has no say or has no claim 
over that intellectual property right that's what they indicate i have no problem with regard to that for the simple reason you must look into the broader ambit of the nature of the community that is recognized and even now i am sure if you look into the updated guidelines also one important area where all these guidelines and frameworks are required to be further fine tuned that is with regard to whether any kind of outcome in any manner will benefit the volunteer i mean that's a fundamental ethical observation however having said that unless and until it is mandated in the form of a legislation please remember it becomes a question of contractual term therefore if the sponsor says property rights etc etc i understand as a matter of contract it's okay but in informed consent form it is not mentioned in informed consent form nowhere it is mentioned that the patient has no right to claim any kind of thing over the intellectual property yesterday i have taken objection i said this icf is not acceptable because if you do not include then one doctor he said no no jogaro icf is only with regard to the trial but not with regard to the outcome of the trial he tried to justify i said under no circumstances please remember icf can be distinguished in that manner in fact in icf there must be another important that is updated information says post trial treatment care now because the trial is over you are suffering you suffer continuously can anybody say that no in the informed consent form it is mandatory what kind of post trial care you are providing to what extent similarly even the outcome of the trial also informed consent form must have a clause because you are contracting out in the patient information sheet the same thing is to be incorporated i mean why i am bringing that kind of thing is in the doctor patient relationship the informed consent form may be one page or one and a half page or one paragraph you just sign it and give it but in the context of clinical trial it could be three or four pages six pages or eight pages i mean you must really look into what kind of there is another important area informed consent in a clinical trial context injury related compensation why do we have to repeat that in the informed correct very valid question yesterday also i was asked the same question this question came not from a medical doctor but some other professor from a different discipline i said the difference is informed consent to form as a rule of icmr guidelines you must give a copy to the person a copy of icf you must give it to the volunteer and it should be in the custody of the volunteer patient information please remember whether it is given or not unless and until the protocol says you will not be giving but in so far as icf is concerned icmr guidelines mandate therefore in icf it should be incorporated so all that is there in patient uh, information i wouldn't no i wouldn't say all but the in the critical uh, elements critical, the, the particularly which affects as an individual for instance i am just giving an example you approach me you ask me jogar whether you would want to be a volunteer in a clinical trial i will say if i get some kind of benefit i will volunteer can anybody say no no nobody can uh, impose on me but if a particular company wants to give it definitely they are entitled to but here what is happening the company is contracting out they say that i don't have a claim but it is not incorporated in the icf it is i mean why i am saying is informed consent when we say you know what is the significance of the word informed why it is not said consent form why it is said icf it is for the simple reason the information that is to be provided by the person consent to the other person either a patient or a subject etc that is the reason why informed consent i repeat once again he is not merely getting signature on a paper no not at all no doubt a signature on a paper is necessary i am not disputing i am disputing that but that should be preceded by the patient communication unless and until you tell me what are the pros what are the cons what are the risks i mean that's where everybody takes an advantage saying that no no how many things i can mention how many things i can do that's a different matter that operationalization i will get back to you but when it comes to the conceptual foundation it's very clear the person who is proposing to do something as a matter of intervention is under an obligation to provide the required information okay same thing in the case of clinical trial as well the person is to be counseled 
the person must be told one two three four five these things you give give some time and say if you have any questions please get back to me that opportunity is to be given the icmr guidelines very clearly mention why it is for the reason on reflection or on uh, after interacting with family members or colleagues etc the person may feel no no i need to get a clarification with regard to this aspect that opportunity is to be given just giving a sheet and say you read and come maybe jogara will be able to read that too only english suppose if it is in malayalam what do i do i do not know i need to be told we have different procedures which are alien to the subjects like uh, you know that uh, induced purgation induced vomiting Uh, this uh, the patient is not able and panchakarma like uh, treatments wherein the patient is not able to understand in our institute we have incorporated audio visual medias wherein the patient is made to understand what actually we are going to do yeah. and and they appreciate it well yeah the, uh, this is what i am saying ultimately the purpose is to what extent how well the individual understand that is the purpose i will tell you in pgri chandigarh when uh, icmr we had a meeting a couple of doctors they took it so seriously they explained the most difficult problems which they face in day to day you know what they said jogaro you said this i get a patient who understands bengali but there is a particular word in the scientific jargon which cannot be translated in bengali okay and what do i do i am sure that a problem not only in bengali even in other languages also the in in english also it may be difficult you may not be able to find a i said i really appreciate that but at the same time what effort you make here the issue is not did you find a synonym for that word that is not the issue the issue is did you make an effort to see that the person may not be exactly but at least some kind of a near meaning whether the person would be able to comprehend I mean, I think uh, the effort on the part of the investigator is something which is an issue. I just wanted to uh, communicate to the whole group. In fact, on informed consent and the way we look at it at Nari, to us, communication is a dialogue between a researcher and the client who's there, the patient, or maybe it is a volunteer who's participating in a study. So, giving the con informed consent means it's a whole process. Correct. Giving the information means it's a two-way communication, allowing this person to ask several questions to be convinced why he or she is participating, why he or she is not participating. Correct. Even then, what is the support still available? All that is of course mentioned. The important, the other second thing that you mentioned, we all take care of all those things. The other part is that the form needs to be given to the patient. the volunteer to be kept to himself a copy to be given correct there there are times because we are dealing with hiv issues people do not want to carry any of correct. the papers back with them because it's a absolute issue of confidentiality absolutely then the important part that our ethics committee has also guided us is that we make them accessible to them so whenever they want to use they will that should be that. definitely there so the right of the patient is a very important part to be taken into consideration any time they have a problem each of the doctors have a mobile phone so that any kind of an adverse reaction comes up the patient can directly talk can contact them for any problem and that has to be sorted out you know all those kinds of issues because it is all concerned with the problems that the patient may face during the whole doctor you brought out a very interesting and very so, important point let me just add one sentence icmr guidelines please remember with regard to this specific situation does not say what you have to do no that's where ethics committee's innovative thinking contextual adaptation that is fundamental what you have done see at the end of the day you said it is the right of the patient whether we can provide accessibility see you are not giving custody of the document because suppose you ask me jogara even i would say no i don't want to carry anything because others may get an opportunity to get to know to read whether i am positive or not i don't want that but at the same time whenever i get a doubt or something i get to know or see tv or interact with somebody i want to see that i should be having access to that document i mean that's a brilliant thing i mean that's why i always say don't expect everything in black and white no never that will never happen you need to apply your mind you need to take the broad contours of the context and see what effectively you can do in the given situation that is the reason why ethics committee as i told you the challenges the members face are phenomenal in nature each meeting for me is a great great learning exercise 
because not only I come to know about the medical terms, etc., what kind of situation, what kind of medicine, etc., but a day to day dilemma, the final objective is very clear, but how, what should, what are the means to be adopted towards that? I think that's an excellent point. Yes. One second. So I have this question regarding the informed consent. I mean, in a, in a context of a developing country, okay, uh, you said that one of the main impo aspect of an informed uh, informed consent is comprehension. Correct. The person must be able to comprehend what the researcher is going to do, but also in the informed consent, because of the legal aspects of it, we have a lot of legal jargons incorporated into it. As one of the things you said is regarding intellectual property rights should be included in the informed consent. Correct. Things like intellectual property right is even difficult for us to understand what Correct. exactly it is. Correct. How do we ensure? that a person who is an illiterate and who is going to enroll in a clinical trial really understands what exactly it is all about. Correct. In, that's a very good question. It is, uh, I, I would even go one step ahead, I say it is not only IP, there are other things more complex with regard to injury related compensation. In fact, uh, I yesterday we had a very, very serious discussion on a particular protocol. Uh, for about uh, 45 minutes uh, discussion. Ultimately, we have decided to seek clarification from the sponsor. The clause was structured in such a manner, I openly confessed before the committee, though I am from legal profession for the last 21 years, despite reading 30 times, I did not understand. I am sorry for that. I may not be a competent person for that, but I can tell you, I have average comprehensive ability, though not top. Even I could not understand. The way it is written, provided, then comes here, if not, then comes here, then this, then that. What kind of, I mean, how do you expect a patient to understand? If the IEC, I happen to be the chairman in that hospital committee. If the chairman doesn't understand, forget about members, forget what about a patient? Is it practicable? The point what you raised is fundamentally correct. I think that's where, you know what I said yesterday? Let me give the context. The sponsor, I mean, if the injury is there, if it is the injury, I'm not reproducing exact words because 30 times is not enough for me. That is the thing. If it is a direct result of the administered drug, the sponsor provides a treatment to the injured, that is volunteer. However, the sponsor does not promise to provide free treatment. If it is covered by either health insurance or insurance taken by the hospital. However, I mean, there were two more lines. I asked, in one sentence tell me, Jogara is the volunteer. You administered the drug. I got the problem. Tell me whether I will be provided care or not. Finished. You know what? I asked the presenter, doctor. He said, I am sorry, I, I am not from legal background. I thought you will be able to provide some light. I said, I am sorry, my competence doesn't. We need clarification. Then what kind of clarification? We said, we are not asking for amendment. First of all, you tell us what is in your mind. What you want to convey? To that effect, I fully agree with you. There are such a serious problem. But I think these are the challenges. I mean, I am not providing a far lasting solutions. No, I am not saying that. In the given context, if you have a problem, don't approve. Please insist upon the language must be reader friendly. You can't write, I mean, uh, see, I'm sorry for this observation about legal professionals. Uh, recording we have to take care later. Uh, the law that is written in such a manner, the only object is non-lawyers should not understand. Nobody should understand. Only lawyers, even in the terms of one or two percentage only will understand. What, what purpose does it serve? I think our protocols are structured by American attorneys in that manner. The way they are, beautiful language. You use more words, but you don't convey anything. <laughs> I think the ultimate purpose is to convey. That is the ultimate purpose. Okay, yes.
even in YRG care we deal with uh, HIV AIDS and we have also had ca cases in which the patient refuses to take the informed consent. In such cases we file it in the same file with a note stating that the form was returned by the patient. Okay. But in cases we have also had experiences in which the patients will uh, take the informed consent, everything is there, but what will happen is that just in front of us, they'll throw it into the dustbin and go off. And in such cases, we can't take it out from the dustbin and file it back. I mean... But you have a copy with you, right? No, co copy is yeah. there, signed. But uh, whether uh, the patient can at a later stage... You do one thing. Yes. Uh, my suggestion, if that is the case. Yes. If he wants to put it in the dustbin, let him do it. Okay. But put it in writing and give it to you. Yes. Yeah. Acknowledgement is there, yeah. keep it. Acknowledgement is yeah. there, but in case if the patient does not have a copy of the consent form later on, whether the patient can take no, any... No, to tell you very frankly, not only before you, even at home you may do it or you may put it in the... All those possibilities. The only thing is, has he been informed? Yes. Whether, is there a record to show that he has received the thing? That's it. Suppose, I mean that is the reason why in one very extremely, I mean difficult case, uh, one per person was given four times ICF. Because first he said he misplaced. Second time he said this is the thing. Third time he said my wife come to know, therefore I have destroyed. Then we thought, okay, I mean, not only in terms of a legal technicality, but I think sometimes we may have to, but not in every case, every person. But at the same time, maybe if uh, ultimately, as uh, Dr. Viri Wright is access to document, I think that's the essence. Yes, anyway, I just wanted to clarify that uh, there are normally two copies for a person. Like one, we file it in the patient's file after getting a signature Correct. and all that. And the other one, we hand over. What the patient does with it, we, it Absolutely. is beyond our control. Particularly with regard to HIV, yes. I justify their actions. You know why? The difference is that the person is really worried whether others will have access. That is the, the, that. Therefore, I think uh, those actions may be. Okay. Sir, in continuation with what you said as a challenge, there hmm. are a few other challenges which I feel that we should. See, we uh, inform consent is done, and then we are in the process of getting the elder, uh, the left thumb impression or the signature. Okay. Patient agrees for everything, okay. but putting the LTA or the signature, there we get the problem as if they are giving their property. No, 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 we don't want to, but we agree. Okay. So that is one issue. Second one, when we are going for invasive procedures, like it need not be a curative or therapeutic uh, thing. Even it's a preventive, we are taking blood test. Okay. They agree everything. For giving blood, there is some problem, preservation. And the other thing, there is a requirement for witness. So in a sensitive studies, where I don't want somebody to know, whether my neighbor, even a family member, okay. the role of a witness there. And then thirdly, I really feel sorry for international studies when we get there are 7 to 11 pages of informed consent. So we always say the time between the researcher and the respondent should not exceed 40 minutes or 30 minutes, hmm. including the consent form. Hmm. But con that consent form itself takes about one and a half hours. Hmm. So these are some of the challenges. I agree. I, I, in fact, last point, I fully agree. Uh, one such situation we had to uh, request to the sponsor to rewrite the ICF. What happened was, I mean, that's where uh, doctor's observation also, patient information and ICF, where do you draw the line? I feel, that's my understanding and experience, patient information is something like a very broad information, much like a policy. ICF is something like a law. The essence which required to be informed is to be reduced in writing. That's what is expected. But uh, the kind of paragraphs I told you in injury related compensation, naturally it will be 7 to 11 pages only. I mean, the otherwise you could have mentioned in one or two sentences, they write ten sentences. I mean, I think that's where we need to raise our voice. Second thing is, this thumb impression problem, I'll tell you, clinical trials must always have the cultural touch. You cannot conduct a study devoid or avoiding the cultural background. Suppose an illiterate woman is there, or even a literate woman. She doesn't want, because she has her own apprehensions. What happens? Why nobody wants to give, they prepare to give blood, but they don't want to sign it. You know why? The reason is, so and I know in Bangalore context, so many women, the pregnant mothers, they come, they are really worried. You know why? The moment if it is tested positive, she is shunted out from the hospital. And... Not only that, she doesn't want a record for that. See, I may come to know. If there is a record, there is every possibility, some other will come to know. 
this fear i am just giving an example therefore even in the clinical trial also many people are worried because even today though we say that altruistic attitude etc but that is not what is socially accepted not at all because people don't understand what is altruism why should i do i mean for the sake of others therefore i think that's where the counseling plays a very very vital role the communication communication not merely as a researcher there is a reason why epidemiological studies etc i myself learned from icmr experiences some of the people they told me how they involve the local people headman or some other person or some religious person or some elderly woman for example you are talking in terms of some gynec related or obstetric related they involve elderly women they talk they commune i mean a kind of community is being created all this is done to reassure that nothing untoward is going to happen to you i mean whatever you are doing it is in the interest of the larger community it is necessary i think i agree that these problems are there maybe over a period of time we may be able to overcome but definitely these problems are perfectly realistic in nature we have been discussing what should be the practitioners uh, how should the practitioner go about it or, or a social scientist when hmm. he is conducting research but i am not a medical doctor so i may be thinking from a patient's point of view okay uh, i have been in bhopal mp and uh, allahabad up and something i know about kerala also and in these places whenever i have gone to a doctor they have in most of the th- times they have made made us fill up a, maybe i have gone with my uh, son or maybe myself or whatever they have made us fill up i uh, i don't remember having filled up a consent form okay. but patient information forms are al- always being filled up okay. and i um, mind uh, my, my knowledge about ethics and all this is also uh, maybe quite, quite new so earlier we used to just fill up because uh, in our country doctors are uh, gods like they are uh, I, what i mean to say is when we want to get cured we go to them whatever they say we pr- we do it okay. medicines or test whatever hmm. so we used to just fill up the forms but recently i started asking what why, why you why do you need this form and then they tell us that it is for a research we have, we give it to everybody and like that way they say so uh, i think the doctors are also uh, not it's i don't i don't say they they are not aware because it's not possible that they are not aware but maybe they are not so serious about informing the patient till now maybe i don't know about all the other states but in up and mp i can say that it's rarely that a doctor sits and tells the patient that we are going to conduct a research on the information that we have about you so what do you say about uh, this excellent excellent a brilliant question you asked i'll give an example jogara jogara is down with some cardiac serious cardiac problem okay and i am the patient of dr x dr x is the principal investigator of a particular clinical trial he tells my wife mrs uh, jogara i think uh, in his own interest it is better to introduce him as a volunteer okay now tell me whether anybody not only wife either father or son or daughter, anyone will be able to tell the doctor no here the doctor had the courtesy of informing for that i am grateful doctor i am sorry but that is a fact that's a fact because there are several patients information also is not given even now a healthy volunteer or anybody who is recruited for a particular purpose of clinical trial is different an existing patient is different you know why in the case of an existing patient hoping that some benefit will accrue to me i'll give the consent you got the point principal investigator did not run around to recruit patients in a given hospital there are 300 odd patients you want 25 take it right hand left hand take 25 <laughs> recruitment is done in 2 minutes time that is the problem in hospitals having captive audience of patients that's where the obligation on the part of the doctor is much more complex in fact that is the reason why one very renowned uh, scientist he said a doctor turned scientist the line which differentiate between a doctor patient and a doctor subject is withering away we do not know what kind of relationship now the patient will definitely think that something good is going to come whether it happens what are the risk what are the implications nobody knows i am not saying that every doctor does that 
but there are potential incidents where these things are being done. I think that's where I think we have to be very, very careful. <laughs>